Hello everyone, this is Mr. Vanderpool. Today we are going to be talking about interest groups. So, what is an interest group? Well, interest groups want to pass policy. Now, political parties want to do this too. The difference is, interest groups don't run their own candidates for office. So, interest groups want to pass policy, but they do not run their own candidates for office. So interest groups can seek to access or to influence many points and levels of government. They do this by lobbying. They um, try to convince lawmakers to pass policy proposals that are favorable to their cause. Some of the highest paid um, jobs in government uh, related work are lobbying jobs. So what are some examples of these interest groups that seek to influence government? You have the AARP, the American Association of Retired People. They represent the interests of the elderly. Um, the Sierra Club represents the interests of the environment. The NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, represents the interests of African Americans. The National Organization for Women deals with women's issues. The ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, deals with civil liberty issues. Public Interest Research Groups, PIRGs. The National Education Association represents educators. I'm a part of the National Education Association. And then you have the AMA, the American Medical Association represents uh, people in the medical profession. So there are thousands of interest groups in the United States all trying to influence politicians. So once again looking at some examples here, um, Sierra Club advocates for environmental issues, um, United Auto Workers advocates for labor issues, uh, American Civil Liberties Union advocates for civil liberties. Uh, American Associ Association of Retired People advocates for the elderly. National Association of uh, the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, um, generally advances African American issues. At the bottom you have Reverend Jesse Jackson. To the right you have the Reverend Al Sharpton two past slash present leaders of that movement. And now we're going to move on to interest group politics. So are interest groups good or bad for American politics? Take a few seconds and jot that down. What do you think? Do you think interest groups are good or bad for American politics? Now we're going to go ahead and relate this idea to the ideas of pluralism, elitism, and hyperpluralism. So now let's go ahead and relate it to pluralism. So interest groups and pluralism theory. So pluralism says this. Uh, these interest groups represent many interests and these groups uh, prevent one another from being too powerful. So there are many groups trying to influence government and they basically check each other. Um, pluralism advocates for an interest group as a linkage institution. These interest groups, they link people uh, to their government. They give the voice to, uh, to the people. Um, a similar idea is advocated for in the Federalist number 10. Uh, that talks about how factions or interest groups are bad, but they're a necessary evil because they connect people to their government. They allow people um, to contribute to their government. Uh, pluralism would admit that not all groups are necessarily equal, but they all give the people a voice in policy. Now, let's take a look at interest groups and elitism and the elitism theory. 
So this says, yes, there are a lot of groups, but many do not matter at all. Uh, the power is held by business groups because they contribute the most money to politicians, and most interest groups have no power. That would be the interest group theory under the elite theory. Now you look at hyperpluralism. So interest groups cause political chaos under the hyperpluralistic theory. There are just too many groups. Uh, the government's trying to please everyone. This results in policies that are haphazard and ill-conceived. Um, so for example, um, supporting removing business regulations and supporting the environmental protection at the same time is very difficult to see um, how that would be possible. So it's going to be very hard to satisfy the environmental lobby and the business lobby at the same time. And the idea is that this creates either haphazard, ill-conceived policies, or sometimes it creates gridlock as well. So what makes interest groups powerful? Their size. So the AARP uh, represents the elderly, 25% of the population. Um, is 15 over. Uh, their intensity, some groups are more intense than others. They have a drive or effort to, per, to put forth. Um, single issue groups generally fall into this category. So if the interest group intensely believes in what is, it is advocating, that will make a group more powerful. And money. Um, interest groups can help form a PAC, a political action committee, uh, and thus donate money to campaigns and to advertising. Different types of interest group. You uh, interest groups. You have economic interest groups. Labor unions usually fall into this category. Agricultural groups, business groups, professional groups. You have consumer groups. Public interest groups, environmental groups would fall into a uh, consumer interest group. Um, you have groups that are concerned with equality and justice. You have groups that uh, deal with racial issues, gender issues, and issues for other minorities. Now, let's look at how these interest groups work. Uh, we've already talked about how they uh, lobby. This is also known as buttonholing. Um, it's influencing government policy. Um, so they'll call, they'll email uh, public officials. They meet, they socialize with public officials. They go to lunch with public officials. They testify at committee hearings. They ask for political favors. Um, another thing that they'll do is they'll electioneer. Um, they will seek to keep people in office who are sympathetic to the group and that group's wants and needs. Um, they'll also give money to campaigns. So these interest groups will give money to the campaigns of the um, politicians that support their group. They'll also encourage people to give money to the politicians that support their group. Now, let's take a look at how, uh, continue, uh, or continue to look at how interest groups work. Um, so, they'll participate in litigation. Uh, they'll write what are called Friends of the Court Briefs, Amicus Curie Briefs. Uh, they, they file briefs that are consistent with a written argument for their side. So, um, they'll send these to the federal court system, the U.S. Supreme Court, etc., basically advocating for uh, a decision by the court in a way that would be friendly to that particular interest group. Um, these groups can also sue businesses of the government for action. Sometimes they do that. Um, groups appeal to the public. They make, uh, they try and make the group's own image, public image, look good. And then they usually will rate members of Congress and presidents and such. Uh, so interest groups rate politicians based on voting records. So how do these interest groups get money? Uh, they take donations from you and I. Um, they'll get them from foundations, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Ford Foundation, etc. And then sometimes they'll get money from grants and contracts from the federal government.
Now, and as you can see, most of the money that is raised, at least here from the 2000 election, was from business groups, which is why the elite theory people believe that the business groups have the most power and the most influence. So, another concern regarding interest groups is the revolving door. Um, this is a major criticism of interest groups. Um, basically, this says that government officials, when they quit or they don't get reelected, um, after they're done with their public service, they decide oftentimes to become lobbyists because lobbyists usually get paid um, a good amount of money. Okay, so these government officials, after they quit their jobs, they don't get reelected. Um, they take government jobs for a lobbying agency, and the fear is that the private interests uh, of the business that are represented um, by the lobbying group have an unfair influence on government decisions. So basically the politician, knowing that they're going to work for this private lobby after they are done with their public service, that they are going to go ahead, it's going to be a quid pro quo, uh, this for that kind of situation where I'm going to listen, I'm going to pass the legislation favored by a particular interest group, and then after I'm done with my, um, with my time in office, I'm going to go ahead and just work for that group. So, in summary, uh, the official does a favor in return for a later job. Okay, let's move on to the assessment here. So for number one, what's an interest group and what's their role in the US political system? And do you think interest groups are good or bad for democracy and why? You, you answered that question earlier, but now that you know more information, answer that again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on. You can pause if need be. And in a summary, in a paragraph, describe what you've learned today. All right. Have a good one, guys. See you tomorrow.